Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back. Now let's take a look at our character screen. So here you can see your level, life, mana. You can see intelligence, dexterity, strength. But when you hover over it, you can see what you get for stacking intelligence, dexterity and strength. Down here you can see your other stats. You can also see some stats for the spells that you have. You just have to click on spell. You can also see the stats from spell that you get from your gear. And you can also see the stats of your spells down below to the right when you hover over them. garden swells with life force come
when I'm ready and not before. Let me. Thank you. By killing Casticus, you've given us a fighting chance. And about his eyes, I'm sorry you had to do that. Yet although Otula's solution might seem brutal, I've seen Kadui men blinded with a hot poker, simply for looking a fraction too long at an Oriathan lady. Yes, this is war. And just a little revenge, too. Take something. A token of our thanks. For freedom. Immunity to freeze. Now this is amazing. Now this immunity is active only when the flask is active. Freedom comes to those who fight. Freedom comes to those who fight. I simply can't express how wondrous it is to see you. What? No, not you, Exile. The Miasmeter. The hope of humanity lies in this beautiful device and the precious knowledge it shall divulge. Far more useful than an accidental hulk of meat and instinct like yourself. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised to discover that your slaying of the beast correlates directly to the strife we must currently suffer. At least you've proved useful enough to return the Miasmita to me. That deserves some small reward, I suppose.
Talamoana, Xavier. <laughs> so you made just a carcass to see the light, did you? Couldn't have happened to a nicer fella. Yet now I've an even more charming chap for you to make the acquaintance of. He's over at the Chamber of Innocence, beyond the Templar Court, and I bet he's just dying to meet you. It's High Templar Averius I'm talking about. Although he's so filled to the eyeballs with innocence that it's hard to tell where the man ends and the god begins these days. Well, that's good news for us. Kill the man, and you kill the god. And what are the Templar without their god? Lambs in a slaughterhouse. Yes. Freedom comes to those who fight. I need more mana. When I'm ready, and not before.
when I'm ready and not before. I'm ready and not before. Our garden swells with life force. Come.
ready and not before. Need more mana. I'm ready and not before.
I need more mana. and not before. I'm ready, and not before.
Cleansed of impurity. You, and only you, I shall save. I am Sin, the Forgotten One. Would that humanity could forget all of my kind. Perhaps with your help, that might still come to pass. For now, the blinding light has been dimmed, and darkness floods in to fill the void. The desperate and depraved set a feast for their lord incumbent, Kitava, the ravenous one. Deep in the Templar's ossery, in the company of the dead, there lies the sign of purity. Innocence bled himself for the creation of that cruel and desperate weapon. Tempered in his own ruby ichor, it was forged to be a transcendent tool of punishment and purification. The sign is a living agent of righteousness, or at least a dubious kind of righteousness that my brother subscribes to. Innocence found in the first High Templar a most faithful servant and gifted the sign to him so that it might be used in times of great need. The great need of innocence believers, that is. Humanity's general well-being has never been of particular concern to my brother. Though I am a god, I have not forgotten my humanity. I care for that which I once was. Kitava remembers nothing and cares for nothing but his own hunger and greed. He is an endless pit of gnashing teeth and churning guts. While other gods rise on the mainland and fight for the meager scraps of what was, Kitava has the most fecund and formidable civilization of his age at his disposal. He can feed when he likes, and he grows ever stronger with each morsel. All of Arias shall soon belong to Kitava, and if that happens, he will rise beyond even our reach. He lives, after a fashion. That pretentious little vessel of his served only to encourage his divine follies. I have procured him a more sensible host, one that should contain his excesses and temper that fragile ego of his. Hear this, brother. From mind of lead to heart of gold, your soul shall be bound, your wrath shall grow cold. I am Sin. 
should keep harboring. What in damnation have you done? You've destroyed him, and yet I hear the voice of innocence, begging for our forgiveness, asking for our help. You and I. I heard him the moment the High Templar fell, whispering inside my damn skull, his heart beating within my chest. Innocence protects us now, holds fast the door against the murderous tide that rushes to meet us. He wants you to pass through that door, to bring order to the chaos beyond. I don't understand any of this. Moments ago, I was just a soldier obeying his High Templar, Bannon the Nobody. Now, my god lays inside my head, telling me to let you through that door and to make my way to Overseer's Tower, if it still stands. It does? All right. I don't know what's waiting for you out there, but should you survive it, I'll see you at Overseer's Tower. You deserve recognition for what you have done. You've freed us from Templar oppression. Yet I fear you may have defeated the lesser of two evils. Still, take something. You'll be needing it in the dark times to come. Now we don't need any of this, so I'm gonna take... Once Kitava has gobbled up every scrap of Oriathan flesh, sucked every Oriathan bone dry of marrow, he'll turn his endless hunger to Namakanui and the whole Karui archipelago. As you know, the Karui will fight, and they'll fight hard, but they're going to need all the help they can get. And I know of three treasures that might just make the difference. They were taken when the Templar raided Namakanui. A whip woven of Hinekora's hair. A tooth that Tukohama ripped from his own mouth. A fish hook that was once the jawbone of Valoko. Together, they're known as Kitava's torments and lie within the reliquary that borders Oriath Square. I saw them with my own eyes when delivering messages to the scholars there. Please, go to the reliquary and claim those treasures before Kitava's children do. Hello. Hello. Freedom comes to those. I can't yet begin to unpick the lies that Utula has told us. But this piece of truth I do have. Utula sensed that very moment when you struck your final blow, when you broke the Templar's power. He turned to me and told me this. Now our king comes to us. He'll be hungry, so very hungry. 
I shall prepare him a feast. Then he gathered his followers and left. Where's he gone? Oriath Square. You won't need directions. Just follow the screams. When I was a courier for my father's house, I'd cross Cathedral Square a hundred times in a day. On the fairest days, that square would be filled to bursting with Oriath's highborn, come to bask in the sun and each other's glowing nobility. It was a pretty sight, depending on where you stood. Once Kitava has got... Remember, we do this for freedom. We're glad you made it. No, damn it all, that's just too strange to abide. I'm glad you made it. And innocence tells me I need to keep helping you. So that's what I'm going to do. I know my way around weapons and armor, and all things Templar if you should want for further enlightenment on that subject. As for innocence, I don't know. Sometimes he makes sense, other times he's a shattered god, but he'll heal. I'll make sure of that. Lani's told me a little about Utula and his cult of Kitava. Enough to know what Utula's got planned. Bring about the fall of one god so he can raise up one of his own. And this Kitava, from what fragments I can piece together from innocence, he's not the benevolent kind. Please, find Utula and stop him. I'm not saying this because I want to put innocence back on his divine throne. I'm saying this because Oriath is my home. It's made some mistakes, but it doesn't deserve the fate that Utula has in mind. I'm having a little trouble explaining it myself. I've never been the most devout of men, especially for a Templar, more of a soldier than a believer. But now, innocence himself rests within me. His voice is weak, barely a whisper, yet still he has the power to keep us safe from Kitava's hunger. At least for now. For my part, I'm simply grateful. Grateful that I have a god watching my back, and grateful that he's given me the power to watch others in return. For a long time now, I thought my god's intentions were being twisted by his supposed servants. Did I speak up? No. The pyre would have been my only answer. I did what I was told and drew the lines of morality where I could. Now I understand the truth. It wasn't Innocence's intention being twisted. It was Innocence himself, perverted by the selfish convictions of the men and women who worshipped him. A god answers to the believer as the believer answers to their god. The sign of purity. Let's see. A staff bathed in innocent blood. No. Sorry, bathed in the blood of Innocence. Yes, innocence gave a part of his divine self to the thing and gifted it to the Templar. Now that I recall, I read a tome about it when I was a cadet. Bloody long time ago. I skipped most of the boring pages, so only remember the bit where High Templar Maxarius smote with flame the army of the Faithless with one ray of its hallowing light. The book's words, not mine. Outside of my humble flesh, the sign of purity is about all that's left of innocence. Devotion should be honored, I suppose. For centuries now, the Templar have boiled the flesh and skin from the devout and presented the polished remains for public appreciation in the ossuary. Personally, I think it's one of the better ways to remember those who have gone before us. To touch the bones is to remember neither the legend, the legacy, nor the lies. It reminds you that those bones belong to a man or woman who was just like any other man or woman. I'd be lying if I said my hands were clean of slavery's blood. I was a soldier. I went where Dominus ordered me to go. I sailed with the expedition to Ngamakanui killed Karui warriors, and rounded up Karui captives like every other bastard in a Templar uniform. So I don't blame Lani for wanting to take back her freedom, and I don't blame her for believing Utula's lies either. I certainly swallowed enough of Dominus's falsities to sicken my soul. It's what we do now that matters. 
I can see that Lonnie's heart is in the right place. And for once in my damned life, so is mine. To be perfectly honest with you, I don't trust her. Yeah, I've got my reasons. Piety kept her work pretty quiet, but her results were brutally clear. The people she took, the people she changed. Slaves, mostly, and a few enemies of God. Enemies of bloody Dominus, more like it. I don't go in for black and white definitions of good and evil, but with piety in her ilk, I make an exception. Whatever's lurking inside Violenta, it ain't good. Not by a long shot. Lani's told me a little about Utula and his cult of Kitab. Don't ever give up. I told you so. What more need I say? Bannon claims that a god now lives inside his head and talks to him. What's more common, divine possession or insanity? I'll leave you to calculate the odds. The sign of purity, yes, a descry staff that piety sent me to study at one point. Apparently it was a gift from innocence to the first High Templar, Maxarius. Dominus couldn't even bear to touch the thing, so he had it locked up in the oshery. Quite reactive behavior for a man of such formidable intellect, yet now it's making a little more sense. The staff was certainly able to conduct and store energy, yet remained inert when I applied corruption to it. It must only respond to divine energy, and with corruption and divinity being diametrically opposed, it's no wonder that my experiments failed to excite the thing. Meaning, if the sign of purity is a repository for the power of innocence, Dominus could never have wielded it, being steeped as he was in the opposing power of the beast. You, though, you're a different matter entirely. People have talked about the return of the gods since the birth of Aureath. It's a gambit employed by charlatans to fleece the weak-minded and morally desperate. Or so it seemed. Avarius and his Templar drones now greet the dawn filled with power and glorious purpose. Kitava has risen from whatever ethereal cesspit he's been hiding in for the last few millennia. So what let the cats out of their proverbial bags? I'm a scholar, not a prophet. Yet there's one occurrence that absolutely reeks with evidential causality. You killed the beast. You really don't have a strong grip on cause and effect, do you? Things replace other things. It's the most fundamental of laws. The larger the thing you remove, the bigger the rush to fill the space it's left behind. Innocence was the nexus of power in Aureus. Remove him and something of equal or greater power was always going to take his spot. Any idiot could have predicted that Kitava was going to be that something. Unless, of course, you thought it was going to be you. Dominus adopted Chittis Cathedral as his personal laboratory. He decked it out with everything his miraculous mind could conceive of. His great work in Psalm, that which you destroyed, it all began there. Farewell. For freedom. We live in interesting times, all right. Bannon is unexpected. At least, He's not the sort of Templar that I'm used to dealing with. His ideas about innocence almost make sense to me. The way he worships innocence and receives such power in return, it's like his devotion actually brings out the best in his god. But how is that possible? A god is a god. They bless us and they punish us, not the other way around. Yet for Bannon, somehow it's different. The King's Feast is an ancient ritual born of less enlightened times. Long before the Karui followed the way, one tribe would conquer another and a feast would be prepared for the triumphant king. The main dishes of this feast were selected carefully for the sweetness of their nature. 
and the tenderness of their flesh. You see, when the conquered fills the belly of the conqueror, two tribes become one. And that's what's happening out there in Theopolis right now. The tribe of Kitava is feeding upon the tribe of Oriath, and the feast won't end until two tribes become one. Remember what Utula said about Kitava? He is the tormented one, destined to rise up from the darkness, and we, his children, rise with him. It was there all along, in eyes too bright and smiles too wide. Cunning concealed by kindness. Conquest wearing the mask of freedom. I didn't see it because I was looking for something else. Hope. The cult only wanted what it's always wanted. To be born again in their father's image. They are Kitava's children, the first of his tribe. Unless you do something about it, they won't be the last. I'm here to serve as best I can. Innocence, blessed. And we will continue this in the next episode. So if you liked this one, give it a like dislike if you think it sucked and i'll see you next time thank you